Hello, welcome to the bike shop at Dalval High School. My name is Paul Gersecci, and today we're going to talk about the evolution of bicycle brakes. When bicycles first came out, they didn't have any type of braking system. People would drag their feet to stop or maybe crash into a bush, and after a while, this got to be a little bit dangerous. So let's take a look at some of the advances that have been made since then. One of the first systems they came out with was a bar that is attached to the rear hub and tightened by a clamp to your frame. What this allows you to do is you pedal forward and you can coast, but when you pedal backwards, it would stop. This worked really well for a while. However, it would wear your tire out and would cause skidding and people were wiping out and getting hurt. The next type of braking system they came out with was a spring-loaded uh, dual arm braking system using a brake lever mounted to the handlebars. You would pull on the handlebars pretty hard and it would squeeze the brake pads up against the rim to stop. Now note, they still had the pedal backwards to stop so this was just kind of a dual braking system. And on this model, they did the same braking system on the front. So there are actually three different ways to stop. So with the advancement in bicycles and the BMX movement, pedaling backwards was not an option because they needed to be able to pedal backwards to do tricks. So as you can see, we did away with the bar to pedal backwards and it's kind of a freewheeling hub. What the designers did is we now mount, there's two mounting points on the frame and the brake arms are longer and bent at an angle so that when you pull on the brake, there's dual cables that pull at two different points that put more pressure and better stopping power on the rear wheel. For the front, because BMXers like to do tricks, with the standard braking system with cables, they weren't able to do this as the cable would get tied up and they would you know, basically break the cable. So what a lot of riders were doing were just taking off their front brakes. This was dangerous. What the engineers did is they came up with a dual lever braking system so we come from our brake lever, it splits into two cables. And as you can see here and here, there is, uh, the, the cable comes down to a single mounting point, comes down here to a bearing plate, which is free spinning. And then to do two more lower mounting plates. So when you pull on the brake pedal, brake handle, I'm sorry, it pulls here, here, as well as here and here. This allows you to brake and stop your rear wheel from spinning while still being able to move your wheel around and do tricks. For the front braking system, in order to do that, what they did is they went from your brake handle and they hollowed out the headset. So the brake cable now goes through the headset comes out at the bottom of the fork, then it comes down and around to your front brakes. And this again is the older style spring-loaded dual arm brake handle, which is a pretty good stopping. Now as cycling became more and more popular and the old way of stopping was wearing pads and wearing rims, the bicycle industry followed suit with cars and motorcycles, and they came up with a disc braking system. As you can see with this disc brake, there are holes drilled in here for cooling, which made it more efficient for bicycles, which tend to go high speeds and up and down hill, a lot of dirt. We didn't want any, anything destroying the rotor. Now this style is still cable operated up to your handlebars and when you pull the cable, it allows the brake piston, the brake 
piston to engage and stop your wheel from spinning. This was pretty effective, but wait. On the newer full suspension mountain bikes, what we're seeing is an actual hydraulic brake system like you would see in a car or a motorcycle. It has a tiny brake master cylinder. Okay, as you can see, it takes very little pressure. The brake fluid travels through the hydraulic line down the front forks to the front brake caliper. Now, if you look closely, you can actually see the two little brake pads that you would see on a car or a motorcycle. We still have the same rotor with holes drilled in it, and we have a hydraulic caliper. This is pretty effective stopping. That's what we have for now. This is the evolution of brakes as I see it. Thank you very much.